week 17 of the fantasy basketball season. And here's a few guards I look to sell and trade this week. The first guard, Kyrie Irving of the Dallas Mavericks. I know Kyrie Irving, he's been on this list a lot this season, but I just don't think Kyrie Irving's going to finish out the year playing almost every game for this Dallas Maverick team. And we know throughout his career, he's missed a lot of games and he hasn't finished season. So on the season, it's been another good year. No doubt about it, stat-wise. 25.2 points a game, 5.1 rebounds, 5.4 assists, 1.3 steals, 2.9 threes, and 48% from the field here for Kyrie Irving. But like I said, it's just good, too good to be true that Irving's pretty much hasn't really missed an extended period of time of ball games this season. So right now, while he's playing good basketball, seems to be going all right over there in Dallas. He's definitely a sell-high player this week, February 8th, at the Knicks, 16 points, 5 rebounds, 6 assists, 2 threes, 41% from the field. February 10th versus the Thunder, 25 points, 6 boards, 8 assists, a steal, 2 threes, 57% from the field. And February 12th versus the Wizards, 26 points, 7 boards, 2 blocks, 2 threes, 52% from the field. So like I said, Kyrie Irving... Right now, while he's playing basketball, looks like he's having fun in Dallas, no doubt about it. Just going off track record alone and what we've seen from him over the last few seasons. Right now, while everything seems good, it's a good time to sell him high. And you just got to go off that track record. I know every season is different, but the last four or five seasons, it's pretty much been the same. For Kyrie Irving, the next card I look to sell in trades, Dante DiVincenzo of the New York Knicks. I know he got banged up a little bit with the hamstring injury in that game for the New York Knicks versus the Rockets, where he's been playing heavy minutes, 35 to 40 minutes per game minimum. He's been playing for this Knicks team that's been banged up over the last few weeks with OG Abinobi out, Julius Randle out, Brunson missed a couple games here and there, Hartenstein as well. And DiVincenzo, he's been playing great basketball and he's definitely a sell-high candidate because once those plays return, which I think could be in the next couple weeks with the All-Star break coming up, that definitely helps a little bit. But I think Abinobi, mid-March or latest, and Randall about mid-March, early April. So on the season for DiVincenzo in his first year with the Knicks, 13.6 points a game, 3.3 rebounds, 2.5 assists, 1.2 steals, 3 threes, and 45% from the field. But the last two weeks, he's been on a tear, 26.3 points a game. Four rebounds, 3.9 assists, 1.7 steals, 5.3 threes a game, and 46% and from the field. So right now, he's been on a tear. No doubt about it is DiVincenzo. And pretty much, he's been the number two option in this offense here since Julius Randle has gone down February 8th versus Dallas. 36 points, two rebounds, three assists, seven threes, 50%. From the field, February 10th versus the bases, 14 points, three boards, four assists, a steal, a block, two threes, 40% from the field. And February 12th at the Rockets, 23 points, five boards, four assists, two steals, five threes, 42% from the field. So he could do a little bit of everything, DiVincenzo. He's just not a scorer or a three-point shooter, a decent rebounder of the basketball at the guard position. Assist in the basketball, he's got good ball movement. And obviously, good chemistry with his teammates, especially Brunson, where he played at Villanova with him. And even stealing the basketball, he's getting about one and a half per game. So he could give fantasy owners three or four categories. But like I mentioned, with Randall and OG coming back sooner than later for this Nick team, I believe his numbers are going to go down to Vincenzo. So right now, while well, he's white hot and the number two option in this Nick offense, he's a sell high player this week in the third and final guard. I look to sell and trade Bradley Beal. Of the Phoenix Suns. So this Sun team, they're loaded, obviously. Top heavy with Devin Booker, Kevin Durant, Bradley Beal. But Beal, he's had injury problems this season. And now since he's been playing better over the last couple weeks, he's a perfect sell high guy because it's something just like Kyrie Irving with Bradley Beal. That a freak injury, whatever the case may be, he just doesn't complete seasons on the year. 18.7 points a game, 4.4 rebounds, 4.7 assists. 1.7 threes and 49% from the field, but the last two weeks, he's looked well, 23.2 points a game, 4.7 rebounds, 6 assists, 1.3 steals, 2.3 threes a game, and 50% from the field, so Beal's going out there, he's put up some huge ball games, including a 43-point outing February 4th, so right now, when he's healthy and putting up monster games, he's a perfect sell-high play this week, February 4th, at the Wizards, 43 points, two boards, six assists, two steals, four threes, 76% from the field. You know, that was a revenge game versus former team, and he definitely took advantage of it. February 6th versus Milwaukee, 25 points, 10 rebounds, three assists, three steals, two threes, 45% from the field. February 8th versus Utah, 30 points, two boards, seven assists, a steal, six threes, 52% from the field. And February 10th at the Warriors, 15 points, 6 rebounds, 5 assists, 2 steals, a 343% from the field. So right now he's scoring the basketball at a great rate. 
He's hitting the three ball at a good rate. His field goal percentage has been solid as well. And assisting the basketball, he's been good. So right now, while well, he's healthy and he's giving fantasy on his four or five categories, he's a perfect sell-high guard this week. So that's a few guards I look to sell and trade here for week 17 of the fantasy basketball season.